My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of secondary hypertension. High blood pressure is important for two reasons. The first is that high blood pressure could be a symptom of something else that is going on within the body. And the second reason it's important is that the number, the blood pressure number itself, if high, can do us harm. Much of modern day high blood pressure management focuses on the second point, i.e. a high number can do us damage and therefore if we lower the number aggressively we can minimize further damage. It is generally uncommon for doctors to try and look too hard for what may lie underneath the high blood pressure, i.e. an underlying cause. And the reason they don't look too hard is because in the majority of cases you don't find anything specific underlying the high blood pressure which can be easily reversed. And therefore it is generally felt that putting patients through rigorous investigation is not really cost effective and it is perhaps more cost effective and perhaps even more profitable to simply tell the patient to lose weight, cut down on their salt intake and take medications. These patients are often billed as having primary hypertension, i.e. there is no underlying cause for their high blood pressure. Unfortunately, the problem with this approach, i.e. deeming everyone as having primary hypertension, is that 5-10% to of patients actually do have an underlying and potentially reversible cause of high blood pressure. And if we don't aggressively look for it, we may miss it and subject the patient to a lifetime of medications when actually those medications may not be needed and the high blood pressure could be curable. Those patients who have an underlying cause for high blood pressure are termed as having secondary hypertension and today's video is on the subject of secondary hypertension. Right, as mentioned earlier, 5 to 10% of all patients with hypertension or high blood pressure have secondary hypertension. When you look at patients between the ages of 18 and 40 only, the prevalence of secondary hypertension is close to 30%. And certainly, if anyone is below 30 years of age and they're being diagnosed with high blood pressure, then it is absolutely vital that they be aggressively investigated for causes of secondary hypertension. Let's talk about blood pressure first, and as you know, I love analogies, so I'll try and use an analogy to help you understand blood pressure and also how certain pathologies can cause high blood pressure, i.e. can cause secondary hypertension. When I want to understand blood pressure, I like to think of a hose pipe attached to a tap. The tap is a little bit like the heart, the hose pipe is all our blood vessels, and the kidneys are a little bit like the hole at the end of the hose pipe where the water comes out of the system from. When we think of blood pressure, we're essentially thinking of pressure within that hose pipe. And what determines the pressure in the hose pipe? Well, one, how much water is within the hose pipe. The more the water, the, the, the greater the pressure within the hose pipe. Two, the circumference of the hose pipe is important. Three, the stretchability of the hose pipe is important and four, the size of the hole at the other end of the hose pipe is important. In primary hypertension, the assumption is that for whatever reason, be that genetics, age, bad luck or lifestyle, the hose pipe is somewhat less stretchy and this is why the pressure within it is higher. However, if we think about it, there are so many other ways by which we could increase the pressure within that system uh, and therefore cause a secondary rise in pressure within that hose pipe. Let's think about a few of the reasons. If for some reason the water within the hose pipe is increased, then the pressure within the system would also be increased. This could happen, for example, with hormonal changes which may increase the amount of fluid we retain or even medications that we may take which could cause more fluid retention within the system or even something that increases how fast or hard our heart beats I akin to turning the tap higher uh, for that hose pipe and if there's something that actually increases how fast or hard our hearts beat for a prolonged duration of time then that could cause high blood pressure. 
if we reduce the circumference of the hose pipe, so any narrowing throughout the length of that hose pipe could increase the pressure upstream from the narrowing. If we reduce the stretchability of the hose pipe, either due to hormonal changes or medications, then that would increase the pressure within the hose pipe. And finally, if we made the hole at the end of the hose pipe smaller, then the pressure within the hose pipe would go up. The hole at the end represents our kidneys, so therefore if there's any damage to our kidneys, that would have an impact on our blood pressure. Are there any clues that someone may have a secondary cause for high blood pressure? Yes, uh, age of onset before puberty. So if someone is um, diagnosed with high blood pressure before puberty, it's highly likely that that is not primary hypertension, but actually secondary hypertension. Similarly, if the blood pressure is diagnosed, high blood pressure is diagnosed in someone who is less than 30 years of age and who is not obese, then that is, makes it very likely that you would be rewarded if you look for a cause for secondary hypertension. In patients who have previously stable blood pressure readings and then suddenly there is a rise in the blood pressure readings, that again represents probable secondary hypertension and you should be looking for a cause for that. Another uh, thing that can give us a clue as to whether there may be a secondary cause of hypertension is malignant or accelerated hypertension, severe blood pressure, uh, which causes uh, damage to our vital organs like our kidneys and our eyes. That can certainly be due to a secondary cause. Uh, also, severe blood pressure, which is not being well controlled despite multiple classes of medications. That can also be a clue that maybe there is something underlying this high blood pressure and that probably needs tackling because whatever you're doing to try and control the blood pressure you're not able to control it with medications. I'm going to try and talk about some of the causes of secondary hypertension. Now I think it's better to think of the causes uh, according to different age groups of patients because um, different things are more prevalent in different age groups. So in patients of less than 18 years of age, the commonest causes of secondary hypertension are either intrinsic kidney disease, which is essentially the same as the hole at the end of the host pipe becoming progressively smaller. The kidneys uh, let pressure out of the system by producing urine. If the kidneys aren't working, then in essence, the pressure is going to go up. Or the other thing is something called a coarctation of the aorta which is a congenital narrowing in the main blood vessel coming out of the heart. With coarctation, the characteristic, it's, it's a little bit like having a kink in your hose pipe. So if you have a kink in your hose pipe, the pressure before the kink, between the tap and the kink, is going to be higher than the pressure after the kink. That's what coarctation is. It's a kink in the aorta. Uh, with coarctation, the characteristic finding is, again, that the pressure upstream is much higher then below the coarctation, and this can be detected quite easily by feeling the pulses in the hands and comparing them to the pulses in the legs. The pulses in the hands are much stronger uh, because the blood vessels to the hands come off before the kink, and the pulses in the legs are much weaker and delayed in comparison to the pulses in the hands. These patients may also have a much better developed upper body compared to their lower body because the pressure is higher. So there's more blood getting everywhere um, when they're young and therefore the upper body tends to be more developed than the lower body. In such patients, it is really important in patients who are under the age of 18 and uh, you find high blood pressure, it is really important that you look for underlying kidney disease. So I would definitely recommend that they at least have a urine analysis, you know, analysis of their urine, and they have an ultrasound scan of their kidneys to see if there's one kidney which is small, which is shrunken, which is scarred, something like that. And also another thing which can be very useful is a heart scan, an echocardiogram, or even an MRI scan of the chest and of the aorta to look for a kink. Uh, now, if patients are found to have kidney disease, then treatment of this will hopefully stabilize the blood pressure. If a patient is found to have this kink, the coarctation, then potentially this can be repaired surgically or even stented, and this would then stabilize or even reverse the high blood pressure. So the blood pressure is cured, so to speak. 
Um, now, in slightly older patients, patients between the ages of 19 and 40, the commonest causes are underlying thyroid problems and something called renal artery stenosis. Now, the thyroid dysfunction tends to make the hose pipe less stretchy. In fact, in hypothyroidism, everything gets a bit stiffer. And because everything gets a bit stiffer, these patients often have a higher blood pressure. And actually what you find is that they have higher diastolic blood pressure as well because it reflects the stretchiness of the blood vessels. In renal artery stenosis, a blood vessel which is leading, taking blood to the kidneys is narrowed and therefore the kidneys don't get as much blood and therefore they secrete hormones to try and increase the pressure within the system so that they can get more blood. Uh, but then what this does is it raises the overall blood pressure of the patient. Um, and there may be other causes of secondary hypertension as in younger patients and therefore in patients in this age group, you know, 19 to 40, it is important uh, that we measure thyroid hormones and we carefully study the blood vessels supplying the kidneys. This is best done by MRI scanning because it can easily be missed by ultrasound. In patients with thyroid dysfunction, if you optimize their thyroid replacement, then that should control the blood pressure quite well. In patients with renal artery stenosis, it may be possible to stent the affected vessel. In this age group, most patients who have renal artery stenosis um, have something called fibromuscular dysplasia. That is the cause for the narrowing in their uh, kidney arteries. Now, in middle-aged patients, between the age of 40, 40 and 64, the commonest causes include hormonal dysfunction, including something called hyperaldosteronism, where patients may have a tumor which produces aldosterone, which is a hormone that makes you retain more fluid and salt and makes the blood vessels tighten up. Another hormonal problem that you may expect in these patients is Cushing syndrome, where patients are secreting an excessive amount of stress hormone. And then there is something called a pheochromocytoma, a rare tumor where patients secrete adrenaline-like hormones. And all these hormones have the effect of raising blood pressure. Another condition which is very common in this age group is obstructive sleep apnea. One in five people have obstructive sleep apnea now in the general population. And this causes a huge surge in stress hormones. So in this group, in this middle-aged group, it is, patients should have uh, tests for their hormones. They should still probably have their thyroid function test like the younger age groups, um, but they should have their renin and aldosterone levels checked in their blood. This is to look for this condition called hyperaldosteronism, which is a tumor which produces these hormones. And they should also have 24 hour urine measurements for cortisol produced in Cushing syndrome and catecholamines like adrenaline-like hormones, uh, which could represent a pheochromocytoma. Of course, it's also important to understand that obesity is very common, and this can also be an important secondary cause to exclude and tackle. In patients with hormone-secreting tumors, surgical removal of that tumor or taking a medication that blocks the effect of that hormone would reverse the hypertension or at least even stabilize it. Now, finally, in patients who are above the age of 65, they too, some of them, can still have secondary cause of their high blood pressure. Uh, it's important to realize that in this group, there's a much higher risk of wear and tear in the blood vessels, and therefore there is a higher chance of finding a significant narrowing in the blood vessels supplying the kidney, which is renal artery stenosis, and it is certainly worth doing an MRI scan of the abdomen and the kidneys to ensure that this is not the case. Uh, because if renal artery stenosis is found, then this can be stented and that can prevent further damage to the kidneys, but may also reverse the high blood pressure. It's also important to know that many medications can cause elevated blood pressure readings. And stopping these medications, as long as it is medically okay to do so uh, and, and um, sanctioned by your healthcare provider, may reverse the elevated blood pressure. Um, common medications include hormonal treatments, e.g. the pill. 5% of patients who take the pill, the contraceptive pill, will have high blood pressure as a result of the pill. Steroid treatment will increase blood pressure. Some diet pills can increase blood pressure. Decongestants can increase blood pressure. Illicit agents such as amphetamines and cocaine. Painkillers, non-steroidals. 
herbal preparations, ginseng, uh, ephedra, immunosuppressants, such as cyclosporin, chemotherapeutic agents, psychiatric medications such as tricyclic antidepressants, SNRIs, licorice, alcohol, and just excessive salt in your diet can all uh, cause the blood pressure to go up and can be considered a secondary cause for hypertension. So in summary, I think it's important to be aware that they may be a secondary cause for your hypertension, which could be A, causing it, B, making it worse, C, making you more resistant to treatment. Your doctor may not have looked for it, not because it is not important to do so, but simply because looking for it in everyone is not considered cost effective. This is where patient education and empowerment come in and where patients should feel comfortable talking to their doctors and requesting these tests if they are concerned about their blood pressure. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all that you do for me. All the best.